hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we've got some show updates, part one. Now for those of you who are regular viewers here on the show, you know exactly what is going on today. For those of you that are new within the past six months, I'll tell you quickly what's happening here. Every six months or so, what I do is I bring you some updates. It's usually 10 updates, five per episode, and they are updating previous shows. You see a lot of YouTube videos that post a project or a jig they made or uh, they had an issue and down the road you never know how it turned out. You never know what happened. You have no clue. There is never any feedback as to how it was corrected, the longevity of it or, you know, that sort of thing. So every six months I revisit old shows, old project, old ideas, old problems and I bring them here to give you the latest update as to what has happened since they were posted. And that's what we're going to start off with today. So sit back and hopefully enjoy the spring updates for 2022. So the first update for today is actually about the Incra iBox finger jointing jig. And I had a viewer contact me with an issue he was having and Bottom line is, I actually ended up contacting Incra about it through email. And I'd like to read that email to you here and give you this update. Um, the email goes like this. I hope this email finds you well. I have a woodworking YouTube channel with approximately 50,000 subscribers. And quite some time ago, I produced a show demonstrating how to set up and use your iBox finger jointing jig. I mostly use the jig with 3 8 thick or half inch thick materials and I've had no issues with it at all. Today I received a message from a viewer of my show who purchased the jig because of my recommendations during my video featuring your jig. He stated that he just got his new jig and set it up according to my video and the written instructions that came with it and then proceeded to set up the jig to finger joint a box using 3 quarter inch thick material. He stated that the blade was striking the rear blade guard of the jig and that if he were to make the box the way that it was set up, it would cut into the rear blade guard. To make a long story short, him and I exchanged several emails back and forth to see if we could diagnose his problem because in my opinion, the blade should not contact the rear blade guard. I checked your website for the specifications of the jig and it states that it is capable of cutting finger joints in stock thicknesses up to and including seven eighths of an inch. Well, after going back and forth with this viewer through multiple emails, I decided to head out to my shop and set up my jig for a three quarter thick board and see if mine was the same. And sure enough, the blade strikes the rear MDF blade guard at the top of the guard's dado cut. If I were to run the jig in this setup, I would end up cutting into the blade guard. This doesn't seem quite right to me. If the jig is advertised as being able to cut finger joints and material up to 7 eighths of an inch thick, shouldn't the blade guard be suited to accept that setup of the jig without having the blade cut into them? The front guard doesn't hit because the material support plates raise the guard up enough to clear the blade. I would appreciate some feedback on this ish issue from Incra so that I can resolve this issue with both my viewers and my own jig. I look forward to hearing from you. So that is basically what I sent them. Now, the response that I got back was this. Ken, that's me. <laughs> the cutout for the blade guard is 0.937 inches or 15 16 by design. And as you mentioned, the front stock ledge supports raise up the material an amount equal to that part's thickness, which is 1 8 of an inch. So 15 16 minus 1 8 equals 13 16 which should be enough to handle your viewer's three quarter box joints. It is possible that the cutout depth of the blade guard may vary slightly from run to run, so your viewer may have one that is a little shallow. I just pulled one off the shelf and it measures 0.955 inches deep. We do make the blade guards extra thick to provide room for overcuts into the blade guard since one customer might set the blade cut depth at exactly the thickness of the stock, while another may set the depth slightly greater than the stock thickness 
and cutting into the blade guard does not compromise its function. Interestingly, the original design for this part was to not pre-cut a notch and let the customer's blade do the work, similar to the backing board, since MDF cuts like butter. Okay, so the bottom line is here um, that that dado that your blade is supposed to go through, they're not cut deep enough for the back end blade guard. Uh, so what's the update? Guys, if you are doing finger joints in three quarter of an inch material, chances are, unless Incra has changed it or modified their design, you are going to be cutting into your blade guard. So uh, don't let that shock you. It's the way it is. It's the way it's designed. And Incra says that's the way it is. That's the way it's designed. So the next thing I'd like to touch on on today's show is the fact that you guys know that every once in a while I'll offer a project um, that comes with, if you want it, free plans. And up until now, you just send me an email and I will send it out to you. Um, the problem is, for some of you, I don't know what the problem is um, on, or whose end it's on, but... I send those emails out. I receive your email requesting the pattern and then I attach it with a little note and I send it back. Some of them are coming back as undeliverable, like your server has refused it. Um, these are not big files, so there is no reason why it shouldn't go through. But for some reason, the server on your end is rejecting it for some of you. Now, whether it be that you're using maybe an, a work email that has a firewall that rejects this sort of thing, I don't know. Um, but that may be something that you want to look into. So if you have sent me a request for a pattern and never got a response, I promise you, I guarantee you that I sent you a response because I always do, but I am getting some of these back. And I have no way to contact you to tell you this isn't going through. So, what you can do is now with the new website, as some of you know, that is now in existence, a cutabovewoodworkings.com, you can go there to the free pattern section and all of those patterns are there for the taking. Uh, a photo of what they look like when they are the finished product, the free download, I stress free because that's what it is, I don't charge for these, and the accompanying uh, tutorial video for those toys or projects or what have you. So guys, if you have not received it, don't think that I ignored you because I most certainly didn't, but some of them are bouncing back. So hit the website if you're interested and download those patterns for free. So speaking of the website, the third update that I'd like to bring you for this session kind of thing is there has been a new section added to the website. Um, I had several requests to please put in a scroll saw section or a scrolling section. Now, the section is a little smaller. I only just started building it, so it takes time. Um, there are a couple articles there, and of course, some of the key beginner videos that I have done are also there in this section, and I will be adding more, including patterns that you can do, practice sheets, that sort of thing. So. Guys, I just want to point out to you, um, I know that sometimes you visit a website and then, yeah, that's great, I, I'll come back to it whenever, and you don't realize that there's been updates because there's really no way to get notifications of that. So if some of you are interested, and for those of you that requested it, I did hear your request and I did act on it, and there is now a new scroll saw section on the website. If you don't see it up at the top banner, there is that on the far right hand side, more. You click more and there would be the extra items or the extra menu items that are at the site. So there you go guys, your request has been heard. I hope you enjoy the scroll saw section. Back in October, I believe it was, of 2020, I brought you a six part, I believe, series on making a ship in a bottle. Um, to date, honestly, the Ship in a Bottle series have been some of my favorites. I absolutely love them. They're just a great, fun project. So I was a little surprised when I got an email from the Maritime Museum 
and Science Center in Poland who requested to use my videos for making a ship in a bottle and condense them to be able to display this thing in their museum in Poland. And you know what, guys, I make this show to help people. I make this show, I, I don't expect anything in return. I make the free patterns to give away. That is their whole purpose. The purpose of this show is to help people. So they have nothing to gain by producing a, a video of, of my ships in a bottle. It's just some information so that the visitors to their museum can go there and watch this short video of how, ship in a, of how a ship in a bottle is made. So they asked if it would be okay for them to take my videos, my whole series, and shrink it down. And I said, sure, no problem. Just send me your finished product and I'll either approve it or say I want this changed or whatever. And honestly, they did a great job. So I'd like to share that video with you now and um, show you what they did with it. <laughs> Wasn't that awesome? So honestly, I got to tell you, it's kind of flattering that somebody would like the series enough that they would want the guests that pay to come into their museum, um, that they would want to have them see this to see how it's done. Um, it's just as flattering when children all over the world are playing with the toys that I design and provide the patterns for. There's a certain amount of satisfaction that I get out of that. And this video is no different. Um, so there you go. If you're ever in Poland, check it out. And well, they took a six part series, hours of footage, and they crammed it all down to a two minute and something video, which I guess just shows you uh, how short my show would be if, if I didn't talk. Back in August of 2021, my daughter asked me if I could make a learning tower. Um, but she had very specific things that she wanted. It needed to be foldable, etc., etc. And it's, if you don't know what a learning tower is, it's a platform that a young person uses so that they can stand up to the, say, kitchen counter or that sort of thing, or to a table and work with mummy or daddy preparing dinners and that sort of thing. It brings them up to that level. Now, I just wanted to give you an update on this project. Um, I designed this project to be foldable and there were some tweaks along the way and really you're never sure how one of these things are going to work. But I'm going to tell you, if you have not yet made one of these for your young person in your life, for your grandson or granddaughter, whoever that young person is, 
you might want to consider it. This thing has been absolutely awesome. Um, my daughter loves to get my granddaughter involved in cooking, baking, that sort of thing. She makes her own pizza lunches. She bakes cookies with mommy. It is a wonderful thing and it elevates that child to the level of mommy or daddy to get them hands on so that there is no struggle involved. The design of this thing is, is, is good enough that it's sturdy, it's functional, it's compact when you fold it up, it's easy to store. Guys, this was a phenomenal project and the update here is that I wouldn't change a thing. Not a thing would I change on that project. Um, I, I made the modifications while designing and building and what you saw at the end of that show is what that product is now and honestly, it, I, I hit the nail right on the head. I wouldn't change a thing. That learning tower is spectacular. And there you have it. The five updates for part one of our spring updates of 2022. Guys, honestly, these updates are, uh, they're a good way to get information and it's a good way for me to connect with you as the viewer. Um, I've said this before where I have a YouTube channel and some people take that very lightly. I do not. Um, I honestly feel that as a YouTube personality, I guess you'd say, I don't, I don't think I'm much of a personality, but as a, a person that is in constant view twice a week to a heck of a lot of people, you have a responsibility to your viewers. So if there was some change, say, to that learning tower where there might have been a safety concern or a safety issue or it didn't work quite as well as I thought or maybe even the platform was too low, whatever that change might be, I have a responsibility to you to bring those changes to you because then you can make the modifications that you need so that you're not wasting your material, your time, and your efforts. That is what the purpose of these shows are. These update shows are to keep you informed, keep you in the loop. So if there is an update that you would like to hear about or a show that you'd like to hear about, do not hesitate to send me a message, whether it be through email, Kenny E at a cut above woodworkings.com, or whether you drop a line through the contact of the website, or whether you just make a comment down below. If you have a request for an update, let me know, and in six months, you'll see it. Of course, I will answer you right away and give you the update, but you'll see it on the show in six months. Either way, guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. If you click that bell, then you won't miss the notifications of future updates and future episodes of the show. I hope you've enjoyed today's content, guys. I hope you found it useful and you were able to take something positive away from today's show. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.